Hello, I'm Nancy Strickland, and this video will give you a quick overview of the basics of creating a ribbon user interface for a WPF, that's Windows Presentation Foundation, application. I'll be doing this demo in C-sharp, and I'll post both the C-sharp code and the Visual Basic code on my blog, which is blogs.itmentors.com slash nancy. And now let's start. Microsoft first introduced the ribbon control in Office, and it was so popular that they've extended it to other Microsoft products. Windows 7 users are going to be seeing more and more applications with ribbon interfaces, so you might want to add a ribbon to your own application. And if so, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can add it in native code with MFC, or in XAML markup in a WPF application. Of those, the easiest to use right now is probably the XAML markup, so here's a little WPF application that uses that. I had to do some startup before I could start this demo. I had to go to CodePlex, which is Microsoft's open source project site, and I downloaded the Ribbon Controls Library DLL. CodePlex is your best starting point for more information about the WPF Ribbon, which isn't yet an official Microsoft product release. So I've already added that. I've added the reference over here. After, of course, I downloaded it and installed it. And I'm going to click over here into the Windows 1 XAML. Here's the, the C-sharp code for XAML, not the design window, but the coding window. And you can see that I also added using Microsoft Windows Controls ribbon. Now back in the design window, this is a project of type WPF application, so some code was already there for me, but I did make a couple of changes. First of all, I made the window bigger so that I could be sure I could see the ribbon. Sometimes if your window's too small, the ribbon doesn't show up. And then after the first two namespaces here, I added a third, this namespace right here. I've added it, and it references that library, the Ribbon Controls Library. And you can say that it has R as a prefix, so when you see that prefix, you'll know it's from the Ribbon Controls. And I've also done one other thing as part of the preliminary setup. I've added an image file called image1.png to my project resources so that I can put it on a button later in the ribbon. Okay, so first I need to create the ribbon. It comes from the new Ribbon Controls Library, so I've got the R namespace here, and it has attributes uh, for a name and a title. And you can see that when I put that in, the ribbon appears here in my design window. So now I'm ready to do the button inside the ribbon. This is a seven minute quickie demo, so I'm only going to show you how to create a single button and attach a command to it. And that'll give you the basic idea, and then you can look at the samples and documentation that you can get from CodePlex to figure out how to do other kinds of controls and command. Now when you create a button, you do it in two parts. There's a ribbon resources tag, there it is right there, inside the ribbon, and it defines the button, and then later I'll write the XAML to place the button at the right place on the ribbon. Now we need the code inside the resources here. Here it is. It says ribbon command. It's got a key identifier. It's got a label that's going to appear on the button. And then it's got an image that'll be shown on the button. And of course, this is the image that I said earlier I added to the resources for this project. So now I've defined a button, but I have to put it onto the ribbon. And to do that, I'll have to create a tab the ribbon and then create a group on that tab and then put the button in that group. And here's what the code to do that looks like. You see I've created a new ribbon tab, label tab 1, you see it's, it's appeared up there, and a group, this is the group, and on that group I've put a single button and I have linked that button to the static resource button 1, which of course is what we defined up here and that's why I get the image and the label that I specified. So that's the basic setup and I actually do have a ribbon in my project now with a tab and a button. And now just to show you what it looks like, let me add another tab. So here's another one with a different label and you can see it up here. When I run it you'll see it automatically has the correct tabbed behaviors that's built in. I don't have to code for that. And now all I need to do is assign a command to my button, code to be executed when the button's clicked. To do that, I'm going to come up here to my 
definition of the button and add a new attribute, can execute. And can execute is going to enable the button, uh, which by default is disabled. When I hit the equals, you can see it gives me the option of creating a new event handler. And that's what I'm going to choose. And immediately it not only uh, types in a name for me, a default name, which of course I could change if I wanted, but also if I go back to my code behind page, my XAML.cs page, there's my method, or the stub for my method that's been written for me. And here what I need to do is take my event args variable e and set its can execute property to true. And now it's enabled. Now back to my XAML to tell it what to do when it actually is clicked. That's the executed attribute. And what I'm going to do there is the same thing, allow the IDE to create a new event handler for me. I'm just going to go ahead and use the default name. And there it is. Now I need to add some code here so that I can prove it can work. I uh, just want to put some action here. And all I'm going to do is just show a little message box so that you can see that it works. Okay, that's it. We're ready to uh, run it. Okay, you can see that I have a button. You can see that it automatically lights up when I mouse over it. You can see my tabs are there and they show the proper tab behavior. And when I click on my button, I get my message box proving that it works. And there you have it. This is a very simplified, oversimplified introduction to adding a ribbon to your Windows 7 WPF application. You'll want to go to CodePlex and get lots more information, but it did take less than seven minutes.